I call this joint public hearing to order for the North Adams Planning Board and the North Adams City Council to order um, these, this meeting is being recorded. Will the clerk please take the roll? Barbara? Bono? Here. Harpin? Abbasalam? Here. Velasquez? Here. Sapienza? Here. Shade? Here. Wilkinson? Here. So the city council has a quorum. I I will be sitting in for as vice chair of the planning board for Brian Mixick. So I'll call the roll for our planning board. Brian Mixick. Jesse Lee Egan Poirier. Here. Lisa Blackmore. Here. Lynette Bond. Here. Bob Burdick. Here. Kyle Hanlon. Here. Kayla Holland. Here. Paul Senegal. Here. Rye Howard. Here. So we do have a quorum. We have a quorum. Okay. So do you want to proceed? Sure. So we are public hearing new business and ordinance to amend section 10 entitled special regulations of chapter Z of the revised ordinances of the city of North Adams by insert, inserting a numerical order therein the following section 10.13. So I wanted to open it up if we could and have Mr. Moranti, if you don't mind, or um, Mr. Wilkinson, provide us with some update of where we are, what's, what has changed since the last ordinance dated January of 2022. I'll be easy. Thank you. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Wayne Wilkinson. I probably serve on the North Adams City Council. I'm giving this little presentation because I am the chairman of the General Government Committee, and they are the one that was this was referred to, and you'll find out why. Uh, excuse me, uh, probably speak up because I think these are not working, and we oh. have the one camera all the way back there. So. Oh, sure. So, is that is that indeed the case? Yeah, these are not connected, right? Correct. So, all right, so we got to everybody speak up because the mic is on. Don't take it, don't take it personal. But I can hear you. Uh, can hear you. So, I'll start with a little bit of history. This ordinance in a different shape and form was presented to you. I guess I'll guess a year and a half ago. Um, it has history since that, then that's why it's taken so long for us to get here where we are tonight. Um, after the planning board voted to amend the ordinance, I mean, vote for the ordinance with amendments, uh, it went back to the full city council. There was concern from the building department and the building inspector as to whether it could actually be um, under the auspices of the building code of Massachusetts. The council then decided that what's the point of passing an ordinance that they could never enforce. So it got uh, referred to general government to look at it again. That's where I came in. I'm the chairman of general government. We looked at it a number of different ways. Had discussions with uh, Mr. Moranti. Felt that we weren't going to solve anything that night because it was unworkable the way it was being done. The general government committee referred it back to administration. The mayor so graciously said that she would work something out. She had kind of an ad hoc committee that consisted in order to look at it again, try to come up with something. Members of the ad hoc committee, committee were uh, William Ranty, uh, Chief of Inspection Services, um, Mike New Valley, Chief of, or Director or whatever they, you know, of uh, Community Development, Zach Fleury, who used to work in the Office of Community Development, and to, to develop the first version that the planning board saw. Um, the mayor. I was allowed to attend as a representative of general government because that's who represented it. Represented it. The, um, that group met about four or five times. We came up with three or four different versions. In the end, we all 
looked at it and I said, okay, now what are we going to do? None of them were enforceable by the state building code. So maybe unfair to him, but he volunteered to do it. We passed it back to um, Mr. Moranti, who graciously said, I'll look into it, could take some time, but I'll be glad to do it. He consulted with uh, Mr. New Valley and Mr. Flurry, uh, and they came back with what we presently have here as a document. I think it's pretty darn good. It covers pretty much all the bases, and I'm going to give you just a quick run through it in a minute. Um, when I read it, I said, wow, we really finally got something here. This is really good. In general, what it states is it does read building code. That's the important part. There's not any real, and I should point out that short-term rentals in a residential zone are illegal by zoning anyways. So we have to get over that hurdle because whoever's we're, doing it now, you're doing it illegally. Period. <coughs> so we looked at that. The new, this new proposed ordinance, by I should say, has been passed unanimously by the city council, has their full endorsement before it came here tonight. The short, the short of it is, if you own your own home, and you're doing this in your own home, you ha it has minimal impact. Whatever space you propose has to meet building code, but it has minimal impact. The same as if you have a duplex and you're going to short-term rental one side. You own the property. Again, you have to register. And it's very important that we find out how many short-term rentals we have in North Adams because, honestly, we don't know. We guess at about 120, I believe, is the number. But I have a feeling if you look on the websites of some of these big uh, e-hub or whatever those are. Uh, they're, 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 they're advertised a lot more. So if you have a duplex, you're going to do one side. Again, minimal impact. You own the property. You do have to register, but other than that, you have to meet building code. That's it. This code works out to, and again, Mr. Miranda can correct me if I'm wrong on anything. Um, this then goes to up to four families. Same building. You own it. You live there. You must register minimal impact. The big difference comes in if you don't live there. Say you're an outside investor. We certainly have many in the city right now who buy up local real estate real cheap because it's cheaper than anywhere else. Uh, and then they do short-term rentals. Right now there's no regulation. They don't have to meet building code. They just rent them out. We have people in, you know, and this is per Mr. Moranti, who do short-term rentals because they could never pass the minimum requirements for long-term rentals. That's just not right. So if you're going to run it as a business, and you're out of town, you're going to run it as a business, we're going to treat it as a business. You're going to have to register. As all businesses that start off in North Adams, you're going to have to go to the planning board for a full site plan review. A little bit more work for the planning board, but it's going to be pretty generic once you get by the first one or two because everybody's going to have the same stipulations. You're going to get a site plan review. You're going to get a criteria as all site plan reviews do with the planning board. It's going to meet building code. So that's the major change. Going to want to run a business in the city of North Adams, you're going to have to meet the same responsibilities as everybody else that runs a business in the city of North Adams. Other than that, at the end of your packet, you'll see that there's an actual change in zoning ordinance which will allow for short term rentals in a residential zone with a special permit. It makes it legal. When we all do this at the end of the planning board, both when the law takes us and confirms this, then that zoning change will take place. We've worked on this in summary too long. Is this new ordinance perfect? No. 
think uh, Councilor Shade was the first one to say, and I'll repeat her if she doesn't mind, is that it's not a perfect document, but we have to start somewhere. We got to get something on the books. If we don't, we're leaving the city wide open to liability. Say this doesn't go through. Say that goes back to council. They want to send it back to general government. Not taking it. I guarantee it will be another city council or another person that's chairman of, city, uh, of general government before I even call it a meeting. We've done the best we can. This is what you got. If you want this to be under liability that you're doing one of these in a poor family and darn thing burns, who do you think they're going to sue? They're going to sue the insurance company for sure, but they're going to sue the city of North Adams because we never bothered getting around any safety. We never bothered to enforce building code. We didn't do anything. And we're going to lose. This, if nothing else. I think it's a great document. I wholeheartedly support this. It's a beginning. It can be changed at any time. Let's just get something on the books. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Uh Mr. Murphy, did you want to follow up anything the changes? I know there were a few things that were changed as far as the definitions since the January 11th document. Uh, we basically threw it out. It, it appeared... Right. Those, there were two definitions that were removed. There was... Yeah, there was confusion about those definitions. We right. decided that we could do without them in the ordinance. I think that Mr. Wilkinson summed it up pretty well. Uh, I think that I wouldn't go quite as far as to say they meet building code, any of them, until I see them. But the ones, the, the statement that he made is correct, that there's very minimal impact for those owner-occupied, owner-adjacent ones. It's the standalone little miniature hotels in neighborhoods that are the ones that are mostly impacted by the building code. And that does not change this ordinance or not. It, it, that's the building code. So. Can I ask for clarification on one of the definitions that I apparently missed in the past? It says short term, um, owner occupied short term rental, a dwelling unit of up to but not exceeding three individual bedrooms. Um, does that mean three bedrooms to rent or three bedrooms? Because most of the houses in my neighborhood have four bedrooms. They have four bedrooms on the top floor. They've got a, a kitchen, a living room, dining room, an extra room on the down second floor. Um, I guess I missed it. I was just thinking we were renting out three bedrooms and not. It basically reads as yeah, three bedrooms. It, it does. Is that the intent? So I believe not. I believe it's for rent. So granted, this is a public hearing to get input. Mm -hmm. So changes can be made at the planning board meeting and tweaked with the city council. So um, I'm thinking that might be something we want. And Lynette, I'm sorry, Planner Bond is running the meeting. So. The only other update I personally wanted to ask, and then I'll open up to uh, the planning board and then city council, and then of course the public for uh, questions and comments. But on the taxes and fees, has the city council authorized in the community impact fee or anything? Is that has that happened yet? No. That'll happen once everything's adopted. Okay. There, there will be a fee, however, since the city is looking at all fees. And it has not come back to council. We thought it's best to get something on the books and then they will look at what the fee structure would be. Okay. And part of that community impact will be Can I clarify that? that too? Go ahead. The community impact fee, at least when they when the some of the stuff was written at the state level giving us the opportunity, had to do with community impact with putting in new sewers and water and kind of like the community impact fee for um, marijuana facilities you could only charge it for things that were related to it so i think it would be more applicable to big units or big sections of units so that will have a lot of that but that's what it refers to but again i think councilor wilkinson's back right it's gonna we're looking at the fees okay so just for clarification all right all right so i'll open it up to uh planning board first if you have any questions from the city council uh, since this is a business um does the commercial rate apply to the <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Well, I'll it's continue. up to the assessor how he, he, he puts it out as whether it's residential or commercial. I do believe that it will stay residential. Because, uh, because zoning says it's residential. Correct. You can't spot zoning. You can't spot Right. Um, just a quick clarification. I just want to make sure I understand um, your review, uh, Mr. Wilkinson. I think um, when you said going to the planning board and the zoning board for a permit, this is only the the uh, for owner occupiers. It's permitted by right, right? So the permits from the the boards would be only for someone who's not an owner occupier who is right who's setting up outside of town. The owner occupier. Well, well, Bill is, stood up, so I'll let him. Okay, yes. like thank you. A professionally managed unit. Only for a professionally managed unit and not for someone renting out a place in their building. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one change that I caught in here that I haven't heard mentioned yet is uh, the distinction made between uh, single and two family homes and, I guess, larger homes in the context of professionally managed short term rentals. Um, does anyone want to elaborate on that? Well, the assessor sets up whether it's a single or two. Your single families are coded and assessed as 101, that's a state designation. Two families are labeled 104. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of if you know <coughs> that, you know you have a single or a double. If right. You want, if you want to go and change that, then you work it out with the assessor's office. I'm just looking at the, I guess, section 3 of 13.3. Professionally managed short term rental units, accepting those operated as single and two family, accepting those operated as single, two family homes. I'm not assuming that's new language, right? Shall comply with building code regulation for residential group R1, uh, otherwise R2. Mr. Moranti would have to answer that question. Yeah, that's, that's the same old question that's come up forever. <laughs> right, no. I don't when, remember that language being there last time we talked about this stuff. Well, it was an I effort, think it's a good change. Yeah, it was an effort to clarify and to help the idea of mixing building code and our zoning and this ordinance. The R1 is a designation in the building code. That's yes. more bells and whistles, miniature mm -hmm. hotel, if you want to look at it that way. The others are one and two families. They're not in the same category as those multi-families. Great. Um, and then one more question I have. The local agent in charge still seems to be written in a way to exclude the possibility of an owner being that local agent in charge. Is that intentional or am I misreading this? Where is that? That would be, I guess, item number 10 under section 10.13.2. Jesse. I think you only need a local agent in charge if you're professionally managed. Right. So if you're an owner, sorry, I don't want to speak for Bill. No, that's fine. If you're an owner, you don't, you're not professionally managed, you don't need a local agent in charge. That was my understanding. Right. You could be both. Or, or you are the local agent in charge. Sort you can of be that. both. You can be both. Right, yeah. Okay. Because I'm thinking more of... Uh, a scenario, and I know this is the case for many people who live in the area, mm -hmm. where they, someone lives in North Adams or adjacent to North Adams and owns a property in North Adams. The language of this just seems to exclude them from being that local agent. I understand the necessity for someone who like, lives three hours away. They need to have someone in town. Last time we talked about this, I think we tried to come up with some like definition of how local someone needed to be. I remember the number 25 like miles. 25 yeah, miles. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it was just, I'm sorry, it's just well, we were trying to get, a, I don't know, Bill, uh, Mr. Murray can uh, maybe clarify that. I, where did we go with that? 25 miles, please. 25 miles? Yeah. But it's not in there. Okay. Hopefully they can respond after that. Mm -hmm. It said, okay, it says individual companies do want to be contracted by the owner of a professionally managed short term and maintain and respond to nuisance complaints and other issues with the property in its day to day. It doesn't say, but they have to be able to do that. If they can't do that, then they're in violation. Yeah. I don't think you need to put I mean, you could be 25 minutes away and still not be able to get here, but I don't think it's, you can also pick up the phone. 
I don't believe, I don't believe the number 25 was, was entered into the same as the draft of 1326. Okay, well, okay. A lot of pages there. I haven't memorized it. It is. Section okay. Mr. Hernandez. That's correct. Oh, my goodness. Anyone else from the planning board wish to speak? All right. Let's turn it to city council. Anyone else want to speak before we open it up to the public? Right. Yes. Uh, those of you that don't know me, I'm City Councilor Brian Sapienza. This work is the culmination of many months of years. many years <laughs> of uh, trying to put our heads together to figure out. We're trying to regulate a largely unregulated industry like many other communities are. And I think that what we have right now is probably the best uh, start to get this thing going. We need something, as, Ms. as Councilor Wilkinson uh, stated, we need something on the books. We need to do this so that the city of North Adams cannot be held liable because we don't have inspections. There is an issue where short-term rentals were, um, were originally long-term rentals that were, uh, weren't qualified or didn't qualify for a certificate of occupancy and they turned them into short-term rentals because they were kind of getting around having the CO to do this. And uh, I believe this is a good ordinance. And uh, we, need to, uh, we need to get something on the books. It is a work in progress. And uh, we have to start somewhere, and I think this is it. Thank you. Go ahead. Just a matter of procedure. This is just an open uh, uh, public hearing, so we're, nobody's voting on anything tonight. However, we'll get back to your next meeting of the planning board, which is uh, beginning in November, but rule it's not beginning in November, uh, December, excuse me. But I'm a month behind. In any event, since from what I understand, any application to get on the agenda has to be there 30 days prior. So we're looking at January before you can vote on this. Personally, I just think that's absurd and archaic. And special, uh, special things should be made. However, I don't get that choice. So we're looking at, after tonight, the next time we will be discussing this is sometime next year. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, Lord. They wonder about government. Anyway, thank you. Councilor Shade. Thank you. Um, we've been talking about this since I've been on the council and long before we're they talking about it. This is something that has been put together. It's been worked through. The original proposal that we saw in January was extremely confusing. The language just contradicted itself, and it was not very clear to read. This new version is very concise. It's very in-depth, and it's much easier to understand, which was a really big sticking point from the original. This was well written so that the public could actually understand what it meant. And I think that was a very important uh, distinction between the original documents we had been working from in January and what we have now. This ordinance isn't perfect. There's still going to be a lot of work to do. We still have to discuss how the taxes are going to work and what kind of community impact be and what that might look like. There are still things that will need to be tweaked and changed along the way. But we have to have something on the record so we can know, one, how many properties are out there being used for short-term rentals, and two, what units those are. We need to know that information. It's really important for us to know which units are being used for general housing to the public and which units are being converted from long-term rentals to short-term rentals. It's really important for us in, in, in the housing market for us to know that. It's really important for us to know that as a tax base for the city to plan its taxes accordingly. So we have to get something on the books. This isn't perfect, as was said, but it's so important that we get started somewhere. And this is a good starting place. It's better than anything I've seen in any other community around. And I think that this, as Councillor Wilkinson has said before, 
I think that this can be a baseline for other communities to follow as well. So I completely support it, and I hope you will too. Thank you. That's <coughs> Bonin. Yeah. Um, it was five or six years ago that I brought to the agenda uh, this item, and when I was president of the council. And at that time, my main concerns were I wanted to know that the shared housing was going to have fire alarms, smoke alarms, second exits, similar to apartments. That was my main concern because I knew that there were people who were skipping the getting the uh, certificate of compliance for apartments because their apartments were in such bad shape that they went that direction so they didn't have to get any inspection. That was my main concern, and it still is my main concern. And this gets that going. Um, then, uh, Mr. Moranti just reminded me, you know, we've had 18 public meetings on this, 18 in, in five years. And that doesn't include the meetings that uh, the ad hoc committees and other side meetings that have gone on. Um, you know, but yet there will still be public after we vote this that they come forward, they may interpret this in a way that they think it's going to either shut them down, not allow them to do certain things. Um, the majority of any of the, I could say, obstacles that any shared housing has to do is really not on the on local level, it's more on the state level. And we're just not going to get past that. However, a number of the complaints or concerns that came in were people who had a single home or had a duplex and it was within their own home and they were concerned like, you know, I inherited this house, we want to have a family, want to, those I think are taken care of. However, clarify um, Mr. Ranty, they will still have to be inspected and get a certificate of compliance, correct? Yes. All they just them. don't have to go through the permitting process, but they still need to be inspected. So if you're living the house every other week and your Airbnb being it every other week, you still have to have a, a uh, inspection to make sure of the things that I mentioned, the smoke alarms, the second exit, to make sure it is a safe place. But you're not going to be required to do a lot of the other things. Now, if you are having five, ten, multiple homes, and again, you're running this like a mini hotel, then you're going to be treated like it's a commercial business, as you should, because it's a, it's a different level. Thank you. Any other comments from City Council? All right, we'll open it up to the public. So if the public could uh, keep your comments to a couple minutes, if possible, and name and address. I don't know how we want to do this. Do you want to Come up. Okay. The mic's on. Door the mic's on. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend there's a mic. The okay. So I'm Barbara Alexander. Is there a microphone or can no, we just? Just I'm sorry. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. So I'll start with my last point because it goes right after, right off the Councilman Bonus point. Um, when the question, I'm Barbara Alexander. And I have, uh, a, I own property at 89 Wells Avenue and at 110 Wells Avenue, and we've experimented some with short-term rentals at number 89. We could switch houses and go the other direction because it may turn out that that works better in terms of some of the less restrictive regulation um, under this ordinance. We're just not that clear on it. and. Some of that has to do with the mini hotel discussion that has come up. And one of the first things I heard about regulation um, from a, a neighbor who was upset was that, um, uh, what do you call it, um, not just smoke detectors, or, uh, but that the whole sprinkler system might be required um, if regulations got put into place. And in the current proposed ordinance, uh, the non-owner operated, non-owner operated or non-operator occupied, if you just leave the house for guests to be in, uh, my interpretation is that under R2, uh, a single family home might have to have a sprinkler system. And that's been said, I think, it's hard to read in the ordinance, a little bit contrary to what Councilmember Shea said it's a little bit hard to read 
if you look up R2, it talks about monasteries and fraternity houses being included in R2 and specifically says non-transient. It's not the in and out of people that puts you in R2, it's the fact that it's congregate facilities that puts you in R2. So they're not like, hotels are included, but it specifically says non-transient. So it's not the in and out, it's the congregate. So this is a hard thing to read if you really start to drill into the details of it. So I would say there's a lot that's embedded in this proposed ordinance that's not so easy for a small business owner to understand at all uh, what would be required. And we literally, our family, are talking about switching houses. We bought an extra house so my 90-plus mother, who some of you saw at another council meeting, could come up from Texas and live with us, live out her life with us. And we bought a bigger house so the three of us could live comfortably in it. And while she's alive, we wanted to um, just use my husband's and my house for guests, family members, and when family members aren't in it, we like to Airbnb it so that we could have some money for property taxes and so on. It's hard to plan uh, the way things are. So uh, one, one neighbor was not happy. I don't think whether you can do something should really depend on the luck of the draw as to whether a neighbor is happy with it or not. Um, I just don't think it should really be like that. Um, and finally, uh, so I think that too much of the city is, is put under special permit processes. That's just a big regulatory burden and it feels a lot like kicking the can down the road. So those are my concerns. Right, anyone else from the public? Yes. yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Angela Rocca. I co-own a property on Church Street with David Scope, my significant other over there. It's a three-unit house. It's our primary residence. And um, we had intentions to eventually short-term rent out the other two units. The previous edition of this proposed ordinance restricted that possibility to only renting out one unit at a time <coughs> since we lived there. Um, I don't see that same language in this edition. But there is a section here I just wanted some clarification on. It is at the end of uh, section 10, well, at the end of the page, section 10, 13, 4, requirements, item number 3G, at the bottom of one of these pages, I don't number so I can tell you which one, reads, an owner adjacent short-term rental may be rented to only one party of short-term renters at any one time. I don't see that language restricting us to renting out both above the other two units in our three-unit house. I was just a little confused why that's in there. It sounds like it's restricting us to rent out each of those units to no more than one group of people at a time. But I, that confused me as to why that would be in here at all. I don't know how that would even happen. So can someone just clarify what that intent of this language is for me, please? The rest of it is clear. That's just that. <laughs> I'll ask you to turn around to Mr. Moranti and ask that question. <laughs> if we could. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because this I is the opportunity to you know, clarify where yeah. we can before this is the vote. I certainly can't rent out to more than one group at a time. I need one unit at a time. If, unless there's a limit to that number in that group, I don't know why this one party thing is in here. Honestly, I other than calling it sort of sub, subletting, I mean, at the same time, okay, I, I don't know why, but it's not intended to try either. to restrict the, us renting both of the no. other. Okay, no, it's about That's great. <laughs> Good luck, you guys. <laughs> All right, thank you. For so, if you have a, I know there's specifications for five units and up. If you have a duplex, we're all set. If you have a triplex or a quad, you can rent out as long as you live in one of the apartments, one of the units you can rent out through short-term rental the rest of the units in that building unless it's five and then they have full other zoning. Yes, okay. but you also have other building code issues that come along with those larger buildings that have nothing to do with short-term rental right. or anything else that you're doing. And uh, the description we just heard about R2 and R1 yeah. and not being about transient, it is about being transient. It is also about 
the, the congregant living isn't the factor. It's, it's when you have that step to an R1, it's because you're transient in nature. If you're an R2, you're not transient in nature. That's your long-term rentals that everybody in North Adams rents is an R2 in the building code. So just to repeat, a, a owner-occupied three or four unit building is going to be handled the same way as a duplex. I do have to get some clarification. That was one of the first questions that was brought up in the section, the very beginning of short-term rentals under definitions, the, the three individual bedrooms question, whether that was supposed to be three units or whether it was supposed to be three bedrooms offered for <coughs> rent. I do need to get clarification on that. So we're going to add that to the list? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for these clarifications. Anyone else from the public? Hand over here. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, I'm Ben Westbrook. I live at uh, 165 East Main Street. Um, my mother owns a five unit building just up the street from me. And we have sometimes, when she's out of town or if there's a big festival going on, rented her space via Airbnb. And I'm not clear on what. Will what the future prospects for that are because it is a five unit building. She does live in it. Um, I live right nearby it. Um, I think I'm just curious about that. If I could ask, I was just curious is it, is it five, other than the unit that your mother lives in, are the other four units to be all short term housing or any of them they're, apartments? They're all long term apartments. Okay, so, so what you're asking is. Four of them are long-term apartments. She lives in hers. She leaves. She wants an Airbnb or short-term. Yeah. I don't. I think that falls into the owner-occupying. Correct. Because she's right. running out her own unit. Right. It's her own unit. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, yeah. But it is her house. Her, yeah. Her, yeah. yeah. She owns the building and it's her. She doesn't put the tenants in the backyard. Right. Or you know, staying in my guest room, or you know, staying in their other house or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another thing I, I heard the question of that, I think um, Mr. Maranti has answered this in previous meetings, and about the sprinkler system. So one of the things is if you have an R1, what it's requiring is that to get part of the permit is you may need an architect or may require an architect that can sign off and say, because of the size or the unit or the layout, you do not need a sprinkler system. It's not an automatic if you are an R1 and have five units, you're required to have a sprinkler system. So um, that's the way I've read the law, is the uh, building inspector, if he has something written from an architect saying due to the size, the layout, whatever, a sprinkler system isn't required, then you will still get your permit. Is that correct, Mr. Maranti? Provided that I agree with that architect. Okay. <laughs> yes, but that is their, my position has always been that if you're going to run one of these that is standalone, it's going to be, and, and nobody likes the term, but that little miniature hotel, the best investment you can have up front is having that design professional go through and tell you what you need to do to make this building compliant with the building code. We're working on the regulations to, to fix the zoning problems and to fix the regulation for the city, but the building code issues are something that you should have your design professional go through the building and they may very well come up with very little to do. They may very well come up with much more than you're willing to do, but in the beginning it's the time to find that out, not after you've been operating. But again, that is state code, not... Not us, right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? I want to make sure everyone's clear on our next steps. All right. All right, so if I may, if we don't have any other questions or comments, um, so just to clarify what some of our homework, going back before we bring us um, to another meeting, we will be refining some of these definitions. Yep. And... We'll look at 
the one party at a time, looking at, but we, no, we did answer that one. Any other items we need to address? It's that really just the definitions. Of, the definition yeah. up front. And the uh, owner occupied. Owner occupied question about the five family. Yeah. Okay. Well, wow. more than four or more. So. Uh, and more than two. Duplex versus multi unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the question. And then anything five and up yep. as another separate clarification. Mm -hmm. And then the three bedroom. Right. The part of the definitions. All right, any other questions or comments before I uh, ask for a motion to close the public hearing? I'll ask for a motion from the planning board to close the public hearing. So move to close. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Now I'm just going to close it on our side. Just to get it. Uh, motion to Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, close the public hearing. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, I did.